All right, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Matt Mayoko from NBC Sports Bay Area. I appreciate all the subscriptions, all the likes, all the comments, um, especially, I guess, the, the flattering comments of people uh, liking my YouTube channel for the perspective I bring and a lot of comments about how, you know, there's basically no BS with me and it's just um, not, no hyperbole anything of that nature. Well, that might kind of fly in the face of the topic for this video as I record this on Wednesday morning, getting ready to, to head to Santa Clara for Warriors practice and an injury update from Kyle Shanahan. I'll supply all the updates uh, later in the day. But, you know, the topic of today's video, uh, we're going to get into something else a little bit later, but the topic of today's video is Devontae Adams and does it make sense for the 49ers? And so I'm sure some of you uh, really do want to know the answer to that question and would like to see the 49ers make a play for Devontae Adams or might wonder if the 49ers might make a play for him. Others might see this topic as clickbait. But um, let me just kind of read to you my my boss uh, at NBC Sports Bay Area asked me to write something about Devontae Adams and if there's any kind of 49ers perspective on this. And the reason that um, I wrote about it uh, is because there are a lot of 49er fans who anytime, you know, the name comes up, a name comes up, they want to know, you know, is this a possibility? So here's what I wrote. This is how I began my piece. It is possible Devontae Adams has played his final game with the Raiders. It seems far less likely his next game will be as a member of the 49ers. Whenever there's a chance of a high-profile player on the move, fans of every team want to know the possibility of that player coming to their town. The Raiders have informed teams around the league that they are open to trading Adams, ESPN reported on Tuesday. So, of course, 49er fans want to know if there's a chance the Palo Alto high grad, a six-time Pro Bowl player, could be coming back to the Bay Area. Let's be honest, the 49ers rank far, far down the list of teams in need of a shakeup at wide receiver. So that's my take on uh, Devontae Adams. And, and I got to say, uh, when I heard about Devontae Adams, uh, that he's on the trade block or the, the Raiders are investigating the possibility of trading him and he has seemed disgruntled for quite some time, you know, the first thing that kind of popped into my mind was being at the Raiders 49ers preseason game a couple hours before kickoff and seeing Brandon Ayuk at that point, you know, still a disgruntled Brandon Ayuk who didn't have the long-term contract with the 49ers. Uh, he talked a long time with members of the Raiders, including Devontae Adams, but also, I guess, most, notable, most notably, uh, Antonio Pierce, the Raiders head coach. So a couple of things. Um, would the 49ers give up draft picks for Devontae Adams? Um, no. Right now, the 49ers have an abundance of wide receivers, four in particular, one who could be coming back to the team very shortly. That's uh, Ricky Pearsall, the first round draft pick. But as far as, um, let's say, a trade for Brandon Ayuk, 49ers have already paid Brandon Ayuk $23 million signing bonus. So that would be money just kind of thrown away. They have Brandon Ayuk for four or four years beyond this year. So five-year contract. And I don't think four games where uh, his production is about half of what it was last year, the season that earned him that big contract. I don't think the 49ers are going to turn the page on Brandon Ayuk. I don't think there's any chance of that. Also, when you look at if there was a swap of Brandon Ayuk for uh, Devontae Adams, uh, it would cost the 49ers more money this year, probably about $10 million more to add Devontae Adams to the team. In cap space, it would cost them $24 million more next year. And then the year after that, 2026, it would cost them $20 million more than what they have budgeted right now for Brandon Ayuk on the salary cap. Remember, Brandon Ayuk's big money as far as the salary cap hit doesn't kick in until the 2027 season. So there's no reason for the 49ers to look to move Brandon Ayuk right now when they went to such great lengths to sign him to that long-term extension. Also, well, what about Debo Samuel? 49ers need Debo Samuel now more than ever because of his versatility, what he brings to the team with Christian McCaffrey's situation very much up in the air. Debo Samuel's ability to play 
pretty much every spot outside slot and then line up in the backfield as he did to start the game week four against the Patriots. That is uh, a vital part right now of the 49ers offense more than ever. So 49ers aren't getting rid of Debo Samuel. And then they have right now, not only the best number three wide receiver in the NFL, they have the number four wide receiver total in the NFL. When you look at yards receiving through four games, Juwan Jennings. So they basically have three starting caliber wide receivers on their roster now, in addition to Ricky Pearsall. So they'll, we'll see if they open that practice window for Pearsall when exactly they do it. But this is a guy the 49ers uh, got, uh, took in the late in the first round, number 31 overall, because of his route running, his ability to get open versus man coverage, and how Kyle Shanahan felt like Ricky Pearsall would be a good fit for the 49ers system. So I know some of you are probably rolling your eyes about why I'm, I'm spending so much time on Devontae Adams, but I can tell you, even reading the comments section, that there were some people who were wondering if the 49ers could possibly get into the Devontae Adams sweepstakes, trade talks, whatever you want to call it. Going back to the money that it would cost in order for the 49ers to pick up Devontae Adams, they have far, far greater priorities, John Lynch does, as far as keeping this roster together or keeping the roster as healthy as it can be for the future. Because obviously Brock Purdy uh, is going to go from, I think he's now the 46th highest paid player on the 49ers. That's right, 46th. Uh, his salary cap number is just a shade over a million for this season. He's going to go from that to being one of the absolute highest paid players in the entire NFL. So that's money that they're going to have to, um, you know, invest in the coming years as far as, you know, how they're going to budget for having a big time, big money quarterback. They also have a lot of other unrestricted free agents who are coming up. You know, both cornerbacks, D'Almador Lenore and Charvarius Ward, uh, Dre Greenlaw, Talano Hufanga, Aaron Banks. And they also have rising costs for some of their veteran guys, the, the big name guys. And now there are ways to offset that uh, right now. Uh, I would assume that in the offseason, they'll go to Javon Hargrave and probably make him kind of a uh, take it or leave it offer as far as what they did with Kyle Juszczyk and Eric Armstead this last offseason. $19 million salary scheduled for Javon Hargrave. I can see the 49ers saying, hey, look, we can't afford that. But if you want to stay here, how about we knock your salary down to this amount? So in other words, the 49ers are set at wide receiver. And I'm, by the way, I'm not speaking with any inside information. Uh, John Lynch didn't tell me this. Kyle Shanahan didn't tell me this. Um, it's I'm not sourcing this, but I just looking at it uh, kind of objectively, I just don't see uh, that that would be a good fit to bring in a veteran player, 31 years old, and someone who's new, who would have to learn the Shanahan system midstream. So I just don't see that making sense. A um, couple of things. Uh, from Tuesday, the 49ers signed Jalen Graham, a linebacker, off the practice squad of the Washington Commanders. Remember now, players on practice squads are basically free agents. A team can swoop in and sign a player off any practice squad and put them on their 53-man roster. The player, it's not like a waivers thing where the player doesn't have a choice. The player can decide, no, you know what, I want to stay here on the practice squad. But very few players do that because it it also entails like a very significant jump in pay. So the 49ers now have six inside linebackers, Fred Warner, uh, Devondre Campbell, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, D. Winters, and Tatum Bethune. So why would the 49ers do that? Jalen Graham was a guy that was among their final cuts. The commander signed him to the practice squad. I think it's probably for special teams uh, to, to get him up to speed, bring some help to special teams where the 49ers need a lot of help. Okay, so one of the things that kind of jogged my mind or kind of got me thinking after the 49ers signed Jalen Graham off the commander's practice squad, and by the way, 
Adam Peters, the general manager of the commanders, he knew Jalen Graham was, you know, obviously partly responsible for drafting Jalen Graham. So that's why he went out and got him. Um, but I started looking at the 49ers practice squad and, you know, who are the guys that kind of run the risk of the 49ers losing to another team? They moved the 49ers did Sam Okawanu from the practice squad to the 53 man roster. So he's protected. And this is a guy who has not a whole lot of background in playing football, but it, it, very impressive um, to win a spot with the 49ers initially on the 53 man, they released him, brought him back, back to the practice squad. And now he's back on the 53 man. So one guy who comes to mind and I would be very surprised if around the league, Evan Anderson didn't open some eyes with his performance for the 49ers in his NFL debut. Wearing number 69, he got in and played, you know, about, I don't know what it was, 15, 18 snaps and just played very well. And for an undrafted rookie from Florida Atlantic, a big bodied guy with a good motor and somebody who competed his butt off in practice last week to win that elevation from the practice squad to the game day roster on Sunday against the Patriots. I think if I were a team out there looking for any kind of depth or players on the defensive line, Evan Anderson would be somebody that I think, uh, I just can't imagine that he's not attracting attention around the NFL. So uh, if he is, the 49ers do have an open roster spot, and I think they would be very wise to move him up to the 53-man roster. The 49ers still have one spot available to um, add somebody without cutting anybody. And um, they are going to, more than likely, on Wednesday, open the practice window for Clea Davis. So the 49ers do have some depth on the defensive line. Uh, maybe they have more, uh, maybe less depth than what we thought after the Sunday's game because – I don't know that the New England Patriots offensive line and with the injuries they have, I don't know if that's a big challenge for any defensive line, but I do think that Evan Anderson could be somebody that the 49ers might have to make a commitment to sooner than later because of how he looked in his limited playing time on Sunday, an undrafted rookie, as I said. Okay, so that's it for now. Once again, thank you for subscribing. Let's see how fast it gets us to... Uh, us. Somebody called me on this whenever I say how fast it get, takes us to get to 7,000 subscribers. Basically what I'm saying is how long it's going to take this YouTube channel and I guess myself <laughs> to get to 7,000 subscribers. So thank you for all your support. And um, we'll be back probably later in the day with a 49ers injury update from Kyle Shanahan out of Santa Clara and also kind of tell you what's being said inside the 49ers locker room.